Good morning and welcome to Harrow International Christian Centre. If you're here in the sanctuary with us, it's just a great joy to see your face this morning. And if you're watching on screen, we welcome you in Jesus' name. We are confident in God that He is going to bring a real deep anointing, not only here in the fellowship building, but also in your home where you listen. So we're going to stand together, we're going to rejoice in the Lord and sing some great Christmas songs. And as we do so, can I ask you to keep the most upper thought in your mind and your heart? Let it be Jesus, because this is all about the Lord today. Bring your focus upon him because we are called to worship in spirit and in truth. Let nothing distract you. Let's stand together and rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah.
Father, we come before you this morning, Father, what an honor, Lord, in this, in this term, oh, your Lord, to know that we have a Father. Yes. We can come to you this morning and cry out, Abba, Father, at your feet, and that's where we come, Lord. Father, we want to just bring every burden, Lord, every care that has kept us awake at night, everything that has brought tears to our hearts, to our eyes, as individuals, as families, as a nation. And this morning we cry out, Abba, Father, we say, save us, Lord. Save us, Lord, from a difficult situation, from an evil generation. Save us, Lord, in our individual situations. Father, we bring nothing but the brokenness of our hearts. And to say, Lord, you are our Messiah. You are our Saviour. Jesus, you are the healer of broken hearts. You are the healer of broken bodies, people who are lying on their deathbeds. Jesus, we cry that you are the word of God that was sent. May you run swiftly into situations. May you intervene where there seems to be no hope, where our leaders are confounded, where there is confusion and chaos. But you said, I bring you good news for a son is given a son is born because a child a child was born because a son was given and we know the government is on your shoulders so we are asking that have your way have eminence in our homes the government in our hearts may you direct us where we are where we need your correction correct us but lead us lord as the true good shepherd of our hearts that none is lost but we are all found. You came to save the lost and you would leave the 99 and go to find the one that is lost. I pray for our denomination. I pray for Hick. I pray for the Christian body that none is lost in this situation, but we are found. May we be found in you. May mercy reach out and touch us, Lord, that our story at the end of this is how faithful you are because that is who you are. So Father, we give you glory and we just say, have your way in everything. I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's sing again, shall we?
Good morning. Uh, this morning's reading is taken from Luke 1, from 26 to 38. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin exposed, exposed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came into, into her and said, Hail, thou art highly favoured, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at this saying, and cast in her mind, what manner of saltation is, should this be? And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favour with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall be called his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto him, the Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For this God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to, to thy word. And the angel departed from her. This is a reading of the Lord. Amen. We're going to sing again. And let's just rejoice in the Lord. I know that it's not always easy when we're here in the sanctuary with masks on and the way things are slightly different. But let's allow your spirit to rise as we sing this great song together. Praise the Lord. Yo 
Maybe we could just pause for a moment. Father, we ask for the overshadowing of your anointing. Fill this place with your glory, Lord. Touch every heart, every life. Minister, Lord, into our inner being by the power of your Spirit. Let those who need a miracle receive a miracle. Let those who need deliverance be set free. Let those who need healing in their mind in this time of turmoil receive restoration and peace. Those who need a miracle in their marriage, in their finances, whatever is needed, Lord, right now, we proclaim in the authority of faith for it to come. We pray every heart and home will be filled with the joy of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please be seated. the 
Amen. I thought I'd better get a song in. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We're coming to the Word of God this morning, and it's a great joy to be speaking the truth of the gospel and the message of faith and hope in this time when we are seeing such unusual days. And there are days of sorrow happening right now, and we need Jesus like we have never needed Him before. So I pray as I bring this Word that here in the house of the Lord where we are physically together, we would know the quickening of the Holy Spirit. And as people watch on the screen, whether it's immediately at our 11.15 service or later on, I pray that the love of Jesus would minister to you right where you are in the depth of your inner being. Let's turn to the Word of God. Well, this morning we are in Luke's Gospel chapter 1. And let me just refresh your memory because we've been looking at uh, our Advent adventure and it's exciting to look at the greatest story ever told. Let me remind you that we have been looking at the second coming of the Lord. Now we're looking at the first coming of the Lord when Jesus became man to be our Saviour and our Lord. And I have brought particular emphasis in this preparation for Christmas around the prophetic words concerning the coming of Jesus as a man, fully God and fully man. And I've drawn from Isaiah chapter 9 the fact that the people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the shadow of death, a light has dawned. And I know that this passage here is connected to John the Baptist and his ministry and him as a forerunner and as a preparer for the way of the Lord. I don't want to bring my emphasis on that this morning. I want to bring full uh, evidence and uh, prepare our hearts for Christmas and look at Jesus. Hallelujah. But it is fascinating to see that in the very same chapter in Luke chapter 1 and verse 76, you find these words. And you, my child, speaking of John first, will be called a prophet of the Most High. You will go before the Lord to prepare the way for Him and to give His people knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of sin. And we know that John's message was repent for the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And there is that sense in our hearts as we come through this period that we are looking for the return of the Lord Jesus. There is that awakening again in our spirit that the coming of the Lord is at hand and His coming soon. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen in the congregation. Don't you want that to happen, my friend? We want the Lord to come. And the signs and the things that we're seeing across the face of the earth now are all pointing that we are living in end time days. Mark my words this morning, friend. We need to be ready for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. So John prepared the way in those days of history. And then he begins to speak of Jesus coming. It says, because of the tender mercy of our God. And many people feel that God is a hard judge that would condemn and cause havoc and allow these things to happen across the face of the earth. I want you to hear my voice this morning, that God never causes these things. These things are as a result of sin and the fact that we live in a fallen world and we need Jesus to come and to bring His righteousness, His peace, his healing, his restoration. And the promise of the Lord is that he will make a new heaven and he will make a new earth. So this morning, I want to remind you, my friend, that it is the mercy of God that is touching your heart this morning. He does not condemn. The Bible says for those who are in Christ Jesus, there is now no condemnation. We thank you for the fullness of his salvation. And only salvation is made possible through Jesus and Jesus alone. 
And it is because of the tender mercy of God. Hallelujah. And here this verse says, because of the tender mercy of of our God, by which the rising sun will come from heaven. That's Jesus. To the shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet in the path of peace. What a difference from the work of the enemy to compare it with the work of Jesus. He brings war. He brings hostility. He brings anger. He brings brokenness and woundedness. And I want to remind you that it is Jesus that brings peace and healing and salvation. So the rising sun, He was coming. And then we come to the passage that we're looking at this morning in Luke's Gospel chapter 1 verses 26 to 38. And as I've studied this, I've been absolutely fascinated with the simplicity of the story. Sometimes we have the temptation as preachers to make it as deep as possible because we think that's what people want and what they need. But sometimes it's great to just strip it all back and bring it back to the simplicity of the Christmas story. And that is exactly what we're going to do over these coming weeks as we enjoy Christmas celebrations together. And so you know the story we heard it read so beautifully. The birth of Jesus foretold by Luke the doctor. And we know that an angel appeared to Mary. And the first statement that comes from the lips for the mouth of the angel is to remind Mary or to declare to Mary that God's favour is resting upon her. Greetings, he says, you are highly favoured of the Lord. And it's a beautiful word there, favour. It comes from charis, the Hebrew word for grace. And really what the angel is saying is that the high favour of God's grace has come upon you and upon your life. It's already resting upon Mary. You know, uh, in the Pentecostal church and free church, we often don't give Mary any credit whatsoever because we want to make sure we don't go down the route of the error of Roman Catholicism doctrine in that they believe in the Immaculate Conception that somehow the Holy Spirit was also involved in the planting of Mary and she was perfect. But I want to tell you that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible chose an ordinary girl, an ordinary woman, woman. And it had to be like that for him to be fully God, fully man. And so Mary was chosen because she was a, a vessel of honour. Uh, and I, when you think about it, it must have been a, an incredible experience for Mary, even just an, an angel, an angel appearing. Imagine what you would feel if, if an angel suddenly appeared in your lounge and began to speak to you. No wonder there was some fear and apprehension there. Uh, and so Mary had this visitation, and it was from an angel from God, from the throne room of heaven, and. The message was so simple. The favour of the Lord is abiding and resting on you. And I want to say that's the same for you, my friend. We cannot be compared with Mary in this story because she was a unique chosen vessel. And so we give her credit because God saw something special in Mary. What was it that God saw in Mary? It was her heart. It was her love towards God. It was her mind that was, there was a purity and a holiness, a, a, a seeking after God in this woman. She was a vessel of honour and the favour of the Lord rested upon her. And I want to say to you that, you know, my friend, when Jesus Christ comes into your life, the Bible says that we come under His favour, that we come under His grace. Uh, and it must have been an amazing experience for Mary. But in addition to the experience, Experience, you know, the Bible explains to us that uh, because of history and because of our knowledge, we know it would have been really uh, uh, quite an awful thing for Mary as well at the same time because uh, she would have have a ruined reputation uh, to be found carrying a child when she was only betrothed to be married. 
I guess if we go to the extreme of our thinking in terms of the law, she could have been stoned. But the protection of God rested upon Mary in the favour of God and she was highly favoured in his sight. So there was a graciousness and there was a beauty uh, and there was an honour before God for Mary. And so we see it was a great thing that happened. And it was her submission, it was her willingness to submit to the will and the purpose of God that enabled us to find Christ coming into the world. And then, secondly, Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid. You know, Mary quite naturally would have been concerned. And if you compare the reaction of Mary to the reaction of Zachariah in the earlier verses, the angel actually uh, had to bring a slight rebuke to Zechariah. Because if you look at verse 18, sorry, in, yes, from verse 18 onwards, when Zechariah was told by the angel that his wife, uh, who was good in age, well on in years, would also conceive, Elizabeth would conceive and give birth to a son. And he actually said, how can I be sure of this? How can this happen to a person, to people in their old age? So Zachariah's questioning was actually a question of doubt. It was uncertain. He was not in a place of faith at that moment in time. And so you know the outcome of that. The angel said, then until the child is born, you will not be able to speak. You will be silent. But Mary's reaction was very, very different. Her questioning was, how can this be? It was a case of how will this happen? It wasn't a questioning of fear or of unbelief or doubt. It was just simple, childlike question. Well, Lord, if this is going to happen to me, how will it take place? And then we are told exactly what would happen. You will be with child and you will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. Uh, interesting that it is the angel sent from God that actually declared the name, that actually said to Mary, you will call him Jesus. And I know the same thing happened to Joseph as well. And we'll look at that later on in our series. But as far as Mary is concerned, she is hearing that she will be a carrier of the Son of God in her womb and give birth to the Most High God. And how amazing it is that her willingness is so beautifully seen in the whole of the Christmas story. And then the angel actually explains five things about Jesus in this next one single verse, verse 32. And I hope you get a chance to read this uh, account in Luke's Gospel. If it's not today, make sure it happens during the week. But five things that are predicted about Jesus as he comes. Firstly, he will be great. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't we have a great Saviour? Don't we have a, a great Lord? Uh, and the, his name is great. His name is Jesus. Secondly, he will be called Son of the Most High God. And you know, because of Mary's knowledge and background in Judaism, she would know that the Hebrew language here was actually saying he would be like God. He would be like Yahweh. Uh, he would be a representation. He would be the exact representation of God himself, but called the Son of God. And, and I find it quite fascinating because here uh, in that culture, uh, a son was often referred to as like a carbon copy, uh, that all the attributes of goodness that were seen in the father could then be seen in the son. Uh, I find it quite amusing because my son Ben now is, uh, is, is nearly 40 
And uh, when you look at him, uh, sadly for him, he's looking more and more like his father. <laughs> he's, he's even got the same hairstyle, praise the Lord. And uh, it's quite fascinating. And I've said to you before that sometimes when you're looking in your mirror and I take out my comb and I'm combing my... Ah, no, I'm not combing my hair. Uh, but when I look in the mirror, I can see my dad looking back at me. <laughs> uh, and I look at my son. And do you know this is the image that's been portrayed here? As, as the angel says, he will be son of the Most High. He's saying he's going to be God himself, manifest in human flesh. No wonder Jesus was able to say to the disciples, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father as well. So Jesus came to reveal the Father's love. And if we look at Jesus, we can see our Father's likeness. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful thing. And so Mary is walking through this experience in this passage of Scripture. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High God. He will sit on David's throne. And we've looked at that in the previous message. That refers to the thousand-year millennium kingdom reign when Jesus comes at the second coming. But then it goes on to say he will reign over Jacob's house. And I've thought about this and then thought, Lord, what are you saying there? And, you know, Jacob was representative of the one who would be like the grasper. He represents the lower nature. But by the time he comes to the end of his life, if you remember, he leans on his staff, which is like the rod of the word, and God renames him Israel. So Jacob is renamed Israel. So he will reign and rule over Israel and he will reign and rule on David's throne. You know, the next thing is that his kingdom will reign, will be forever. He will reign over Israel. He will reign over all men. He will reign over the nations. And that's why the Bible says, and the government will be upon his shoulders. There will be one government. Now we know that the uh, Antichrist and Satan always counterfeits uh, anything that God wants to do. He will bring something that is confusing and something that is not real. And that's why in the end time we will see a false church and the church that belong, truly belongs to God. We'll see the, His kingdom, the enemy's kingdom, warring against the kingdom of light. Uh, and as we move towards this time, you will find that the world church will emerge over these coming years and you will find that actually there will be a, a kingdom of the enemy established right around the world. And the Bible explains there will be like one rulership, one government, and it will be a government that is antichrist. But thanks be to God, you know, we have a queen sitting on our throne. We have Prince Charles, who is a king in waiting. He's been waiting a long time, hasn't he? <laughs> but we also have Prince William. And there is a, a, an inheritance line of royalty. And I want to tell you that when you came to know Jesus Christ, you received the birthright and the inheritance of God and the grace and the favour of the Most High God sits and rests upon you, in you and upon your life. And you belong to a different kingdom, hallelujah. So when this enemy's kingdom is, is raging and growing and warring, guess what? We do not belong to that kingdom. We belong to the kingdom of God. You say, Pastor Paul, why do you say that? Because the fifth point predicted about Jesus is that he will sit and rule and reign forever and forever and forever. That his kingdom is not a physical kingdom alone. His kingdom is not just a temporary kingdom. His kingdom is eternal. His throne is eternal. Hallelujah. And friend, that means that that's the kingdom you belong to. And it is a kingdom that will never end. You know what I find so amazing as we live the Christian life? And I was walking along the street the other day just thinking about it and dwelling on it and enjoying the thought of revelation in my spirit. Uh, and it was this, that actually, although I'm physically in the world, with all the changes that have been happening over these last few months, 
I might be physically still in the world, but I am a representation of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. That as I walk through life, as I move through these days of pandemic, I am a son of the Most High God. You are a son of the Most High God. You are representing Jesus as you come through life. And what a joy it is to be serving the Lord in these days. Oh, there's power in the gospel message. I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation for all who believe. And if you have believed, my friend, the same favour that came to rest upon Mary is resting upon you and living in you through Jesus dwelling in your heart. So thanks be to God for these wonderful things. We serve a ruler and the King of kings and he shall reign forever and forever. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible is very, very precise and specific. And it makes it very plain that when the angel spoke to Mary, she was a virgin. And the original text would be nearer our reading that we heard in more of a King James translation, that she had not known a man. And it makes it very plain that Mary was a pure woman, a vessel of honour, and God chose her to bear his son, to carry his son. And Mary in her questioning says, how can this be? And many, many people who doubt and are uncertain or unsure about how God could possibly cause this to happen. Mary asks the question and God gives us an exact answer of how he brought his son into the womb of Mary. The Bible says here, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. You know, as you listen to me, my friend, you may have been trapped in false religion. You may have been thinking that there are many gods. You may have been thinking that it doesn't matter what faith you have as long as you have a faith and that many roads lead to God. I want to tell you the Bible tells us the exact opposite of that, that there is only one Saviour. There's only one Master. There's only one who could pay the price for our sin. It's the Son of the Most High God and His name is spelled out clearly in the book. His name is Jesus because He will save His people from their sins. And as you listen to my voice today, if that's the position you're in where you've not yet come to saving grace and the knowledge of these amazing truths, my prayers that... As, you close, as we close this service today, that you will make your good confession of faith in Jesus and Jesus alone. And so Mary is told that it be by the Holy Spirit that the Jesus is planted in the womb. Very often when God is about to do something miraculous or unusual or unique, he will give a sign beforehand. And the fact that Elizabeth, who had been barren and already in her old age, also conceived a prophetic child that would come is a sign that there is nothing impossible with God. And even in the Christmas story here, we have those very words, for nothing is impossible with God. And friend, as you come through these months and however long it will be of pandemic, I want to say this over your life and into your heart. Nothing is impossible with God. You can know his protection. You can know his peace. You can be confident in the future that the one who sits upon the eternal throne And the Lord of glory himself will continue to let his favour rest and abide over you in Jesus' name. 
And so nothing is impossible with God. And actually it's a, an image, if you like, of what was about to happen. That up until this dispensation of time, Old Testament times, up until this moment that Jesus came, there had been a spiritual barrenness over the house of Israel, over mankind. But now, with the coming of Jesus, the barrenness was over and the refreshing and the love and the life of God was about to come again once to his people. There'd been 400 years of silence where men and women had not heard from God in the way that we do. But that silence was broken with a prophetic voice saying, this is my beloved son. Thanks be to God. Nothing is impossible with God. So how wonderful it is that Mary was chosen for this unique task. And then in closing, we see it was her willingness and submission that tells us why the Lord was able to choose her. And does that not carry over into our own life for the will and the purpose of God of whatever might unfold for us? Our willingness and submission. Willingness and submission to God causes his favour, his grace to rest and reside upon us. So as I close today in this exciting Christmas story, I've brought us right up to the moment where we can now begin to look at the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And next Sunday, we are going to have our great big carol service event. And in that service, I'll bring the climax about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But as I close today, I just want to declare and remind you that the grace and the favour of God that rested upon Mary also rests and resides over you. Make sure that your heart is right with God. Make sure that your mind is thinking pure. Make sure that your spirit is in a place of submission and willing surrender to the purpose of God. Because in the last verse we find Mary saying, let it be to me according to your word. I wonder maybe where you are, you could say that out loud. Let it be to me according to your word. May the Lord bless you today as you ponder on these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's stand together and sing. Hidden Lord
Father, we want to thank You for the overshadowing of Your Holy Spirit. That in these days that we never ever thought we'd be living through, we can know the manifest presence of Christ. Holy Spirit, come upon Your people afresh. Holy Spirit, walk with us as we surrender as we willingly submit to your will and your ways. Now I pray that this week, as you continue to prepare for Christmas, what will be most important in your life will not be the tinsel or the tree, but it will be getting to know Jesus in a deeper and a more wonderful way. That this year your Christmas will not be filled with things that are irrelevant, but things that mean so much. Christ in the centre of your heart and your Christmas. Now I pray that the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind until we meet together again in the courts of His glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you. We're excited to have you join us on Sunday. We've put all possible measures in place to ensure that you have an enjoyable and safe experience when attending one of our services. In line with current government guidance and to assist the NHS Test and Trace service, we need you to register and book your place in advance. We will keep a secure and temporary record of your details for 21 days. Booking your place is easy. Just follow this four-step process you'll receive an email inviting you to book your space for a service. When you open the email, simply click Accept if you are planning to attend that week. If you want to find out more about booking online, building safety measures, what it is like to attend a service, or whether it is safe for you to personally attend, you can click the More Information link in the email to visit our website, where we have detailed guidance for all of these areas. If you don't see your email, make sure you check your spam or email us at sunday at hick.org to request your booking email. Once you have clicked accept, you'll be directed to the booking page. Verify that your personal details are correct and then choose which service you would like to attend. Please make sure you read, understand and accept that your details be kept for 21 days. When attending with other members of your household, you have the chance to add their names into your booking by simply clicking Add Additional Ticket. We need to know exactly who is coming and every person needs to have their own booking. In a group booking scenario, each member will receive an email to let them know they have a confirmed space at the service. Finally, click Proceed. You will then be shown a page which will confirm your details and the details of others attending with you. 
If everything looks correct, please click confirm. A confirmation email will be sent to you informing you that your seat or seats have been reserved. We encourage you to act as fast as possible as we need to adhere to social distancing guidelines and therefore seating is limited. Spaces will be allocated on a first-come, first-served basis and only people with a valid registration will be allowed into the building. When you arrive on Sunday morning, a member of our team will check you in using the registration you completed online. Please do not forget to bring your face covering and follow social distancing measures at all times. Lastly, when planning to attend, please consider your current health conditions and relevant advice from your GP or the NHS. If you have any questions or queries or need to change some details regarding your bookings, you can email sunday at hic.org and we'll be happy to help you. We're excited to have you join us on Sunday. We have put all possible measures in place to ensure that you have an enjoyable and safe experience when attending one of our services. On entering the church, please make sure you use the hand sanitizer that is available and you must wear a face covering at all times. An usher will check you in using the online booking you made earlier in the week. We have set up a one-way system for your safety. Firstly, please note the yellow footprints on the floor, which show you the path you should follow. Keep to your right as you enter the sanctuary. If you bring your offerings or tithes, please make sure you have an envelope ready, put your cash donation in, and promptly drop it in the boxes provided on your way in to avoid any unnecessary waiting time or queue. An usher will guide you to your seat. Please note social distancing signs on the walls indicating a one meter plus requirement. The seats to your left and right should not be occupied. No congregational singing will be allowed. Please note that all junior church classrooms and the creche will remain closed. The coffee bar will also remain closed except for the Lifehouse service. If you need to use the toilet facilities, please note the following. If you're going up the stairs, you must keep to the right and follow the yellow footprints. One person at a time may use the lift unless you are part of the same household. Only two people maximum are allowed to use the toilet facilities at any one time. They now have disposable hand towels for your use. In the event of an emergency that requires evacuating the building, you should proceed to the nearest fire exit and follow the instructions of the ushers and emergency coordinators. When the service is finished, please exit the building promptly and make sure you follow the one-way system in the direction of the yellow footprints. The prompt clearing of the building is to facilitate the new cleaning procedures, especially between services. We are looking forward to welcoming you soon to one of our upcoming services.